Hey guys, this is Kurt and welcome to Kurt's RPM Garage. Today we are going to be attempting to install passive entry onto the driver's side door of my 2023 F-150 Lightning Pro. Uh, this will also work on the XLT. And um, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. I haven't done this yet, obviously. You can see on my door handle, but these are the things we're going to need to install. We have this um, door handle right here and you're going to notice it's obviously the wrong color. But we're going to do a little door handle swap. Apparently getting the part is not that easy. So this is the best the, the best the guys came up with. And then you're going to need this to do this harness, which has obviously a ton of plugs. So we're going to have to pull the door apart and then start unhooking and rehooking all this whole harness up. And then on top of that, you are going to need four scan and a laptop with a OBD2 to USB connector so that you can get that plugged in. And I just want to throw a shout out to uh, ZSC100. He's the guy from the F-150 Lightning Forums who did this first. He's the guy who paved the way for everybody else, making this possible. Um, I'm not smart enough to figure all this stuff out. I'm just here to uh, take you guys along for the ride with me installing this since uh, nobody has put a video up on this yet. So, yeah, so uh, we're going to give it our best shot. Um, I'm not exactly sure what tools I'm going to need. Um, I got a little socket set, uh, my little impact driver, some Torx bits, a few other things, screwdrivers. We'll see what we need. I'm, I'm kind of just assuming we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. First of the things first, we're going to start tearing into the door. And then, um, yeah, we'll start uh, replacing this harness. All right, first things first, whenever I'm working with electricity, I like to disconnect the 12-volt battery. It's probably not totally necessary considering this is really low-voltage stuff. But regardless, I still like to do it just in case. So grab a hold of this, be real gentle, just slightly pull out and up, and this should come right out without breaking your clips. And then it's gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. We'll take that the negative cable off, pull that up out of the way, tuck it underneath. Then, we're, then we can move over to the door. All right, next step, we're gonna open up, open up the driver's side door, and then we should have two seven millimeter uh, bolts right here, one in there and one over here. We'll get those undone, move on to the next one. All right, after getting those bottom two out, we're gonna move over to this reflector right here. Take a small flathead screwdriver, slip it in the top and kind of work this out. There we go, just like that. And then we got a seven millimeter bolt right there. So we'll zip that out, go on the next one. All right, next up, we're gonna go underneath this door handle to this little access panel. We'll take our trim pry tool and then put it in kind of towards the top. And then we'll get underneath it, put that out. Get rid of that, just go by hand. All right, after that's off, again, we got two seven millimeters, one right here, one right here. So we got our impact driver on, on each of those. Pull those All right, next up, we'll move a little higher, go to this plastic piece right here. We'll get our trim tool, get it underneath the top, pull it out a little bit, then take our hand and just kind of work it out. All right, once we got that off, we have another seven millimeter right in this hole right here. We'll get that taken off. All right, now it's time to get this door panel off. We're gonna go around and pull this off uh, little by little. There's little push pins all around it. So we're gonna go ahead and get those released, pull the door panel out slightly, and then we gotta disconnect the wiring. There's a couple harnesses. They're just tabs here and there. Also, this uh, little mechanism right here, there's two little tabs inside. You push those in and that will pull right out and disconnect. There is one, though, one um, wiring harness or something that goes in there. It's a bit more complicated. I've done this before, so we're just going to leave that. We're going to support the door so it's not hanging on that. But get everything else disconnected just so we can give ourselves enough room. So, yeah, I'm going to need both hands for this. I'm going to put my phone down, but I'll uh, bring you guys back once I got everything off. All right, so here's the door panel taken off. We did, We needed to disconnect this one. Um, and then this guy right here, like I said, just little pins on the back, they come right out. Same thing with this guy. This mechanism, you just push down right here, unhooks it, pulls right out. Like I said, this blue one, it's a bit more complicated. Um, it's something to do with the door handle mechanism. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. That, that probably will come off when I actually take the door handle off. But we'll see, honestly. Um, so, Let's uh, go over here. We got our wiring harness. So we can see this. This is what connects to the cab of the truck. Then this runs in the door and the rest of this is all inside the door. So 
as we can see, here's where it starts right here. It goes inside, works around. Um, this is definitely gonna have to come down, which is fine. I've actually done that before. And the speaker is likely gonna have to come out to give us some clearance and some room to work. Um, so I'm probably gonna take the speaker out next. Let's see what size these are. These, yeah, these, these are seven millimeters as well. So I'm gonna zip these off, get this speaker pulled out, and then, um, yeah, we'll see what we got after that. All right, got that speaker out. There's just one plug on the bottom and then four bolts. But also on the bottom, I was a little stuck on this. There's a little bit of a hook right there with these two pins. I actually uh, broke one of those pins you can see right there, but not a big deal. I should go in just fine afterwards. But yeah, I think you kind of have to like just get it at such an angle that that hook kind of releases and then pull it out. But that's not how I did it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take a look in here, see what we got. Um, I may have made a mistake in putting the window down. I probably need to put that back up to give myself some room. All right, I'm back after a second. Note to self, do not put the window down before you start. Keep that thing up. That way uh, you should have lots more clearance down here. Theoretically, we might later have to come back and put it down and up just to kind of work our way around here. Uh, but I think up is uh, going to be the prime location for now so we can get these wires routed. But all right, let's go on to the next part. All right, next up, we're going to move on to the door handle. Uh, we're gonna start on that. First step is to pop this little guy off. I think we can do this with our trim tool. Yeah, I believe it just comes off. I'm gonna use two hands. Once you get that little piece off, like just go like that. Once you get all flap up, you can even take some pliers and just pull out one of the corners. We have this little five millimeter little guy. It's not an actual bolt, but it's kind of like a retaining um, mechanism. So what you were gonna do is get a five millimeter socket, put it on there and basically just loosen it until it stops. And once it's, um, once it's done that, it's kind of like a little uh, clamp. And once you uh, loosen it all the way, that's gonna open up the gap to the biggest point. That'll give us the best, best shot at uh, pulling that door handle out. So yeah, I'm gonna loosen that up and then we'll uh, see if we can get that door. All right, we got our five millimeter socket on a hand tool. Probably don't wanna use power tools on this. And then we're just gonna turn this until it doesn't wanna turn anymore. And our door handle should be getting looser and looser as we do this. All right, it's not stopping, but it's making a clicking noise like it's going off its track and then popping back on. So I think it's all the way off. So next step is just to grab the door handle. We're just gonna give it a, just kind of work it out. And we should be good here. So I might need two hands for this, but let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'm gonna need two hands. I got it a little bit ways, but I'm just gonna take my other hand and just kind of give myself something to leverage off of and pull it out slowly. All right, about one second after I put the camera down, just kind of give it a little bit of a tug and then the front piece should work its way out. There's no wiring on this handle, so there we go. That's the handle. So I'll bring this over here. We're gonna need to do a little bit of a modification. We need to swap over the mechanism on this with the wires and basically just take the cover off the old one, put it on this one, but one other thing is we need to basically dremel in an opening right here for this. I'm gonna try and do it as good as I can. I'll use tape and a little bit of marker just to kind of mark my location. And we're gonna take the dremel and see what we can do. All right, before we do the actual dremel dremeling, I forgot we need to actually swap these handles or at least get them off. So I'm gonna do this first on this, uh, this one because this will be a practice one. But basically we need to pull this uh, rubber boot off here on the end. And then we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and in this little, little crevice up here, I don't know if you can see that, we're gonna basically put the screwdriver in there and we're gonna kind of work it off. And then as it starts to go, we're gonna move over to the other side, do the same thing, other side, until finally it loosens enough to pop off. And we wanna be real gentle with this. Uh, we don't want this thing to shatter. So I'm gonna do it on this one first to practice, and then move over to the other one. All right, so I managed to get my practice one off, no problem. So I'm gonna set up the camera and see if I can show you guys how to do the other one. All right, hopefully you can see this. So we got this piece right here. I'm gonna pull that part and it's not really gonna be a, a prying motion. It's gonna be kind of a twisting motion until you can get this to kind of pop up. So I've got this here. I'm gonna kind of slowly just pry this and it's it's starting to lift in places like right here. Hopefully you can see that. Do the other, switch the other side. And then I think it's starting to come so. You can kind of start to pull this thing apart by the mechanism. Yeah. yeah. It's 
starting to come. Sorry, I just wanted to, now I'm kind of in behind it. Just really don't want to break it. So grab it up here. Jeez, this side does not want to come. Mm, the other one was way easier. Screwdriver, my kind of. There we go. Just release, and then you just keep pulling, and it's off. That's it. Hopefully, you can see that. All right, I got this kind of drawn out. It's in blue sharpie, so it's kind of hard to see, but I got it as good as I think I can. So I'm gonna take the Dremel, start cleaning this out. Be real conservative. Um, try and make it as clean as possible so it looks half decent, and then yeah, we'll see if it fits. We got the hole open for this, got it installed. Um, I did an okay job, could have been a little bit tighter, but I'm pretty happy with it, so that's all right. Uh, definitely take your time with this. If you are not comfortable doing this or think you're gonna screw it up, definitely uh, try and find a buddy or somebody who uh, knows how to do this kind of stuff because like I said, I've done it a couple times and I could have done a better job, but it's all right, I'm pretty happy with it, so. Uh, the next step is actually, uh, there's a piece in the door that actually needs to be dremeled as well. <laughs> Let's see if we can see, yeah, right up here. Um, this little channel needs to be cut into, so I gotta put my Dremel into there and cut a little slot into there to make room for the wiring. So uh, here's the diagram to follow along on the Evan 50 Lightning Forum, which I'll, I will also install, or um, I'll post in the description. You can check this out. You can see you need to get up into this channel and Dremel out that little corner piece, just like that. So. That's what I'm going to do. This is going to be impossible to record, so I'm going to have to do it without you guys. Um, I'll get in there, do that, and then we'll... All right, the we got that all dremeled out. Don't know how well you can see that, but there's a little uh, bridge thing in the middle. You just have to take that out and then open that up. And here's the tool. I use a little Ryobi Dremel. I got this from Home Depot. I think it was like 40 bucks or something, lithium-ion. So worked good for this. Small enough to get in there. If you're using a drill, this might be next to impossible. So... Yeah, hopefully you can get that, and then let's go. All right, next up, we're going to put the door handle on. Just feed this piece through until it goes in, and then we're going to push this piece in until it goes in, and then we're going to tighten down this uh, little 5 millimeter bolt, like just like we took it off, just the reverse. So I'm going to go ahead and use two hands and do this, and then we can go on to the next part. All right, I'm kind of figuring this out as I go along. This part right here didn't really want to go in, so I pushed in as much as I can, and then I just tried to start tightening this, and then it actually started feeding in. So it's in now and I'm just tightening it. it. It pulled itself in. So I'm gonna do this till it tightens up and it should be good. All right, guys, we're in the process of putting this door handle back on. I did the Dremel thing. Um, there was a couple clearance issues I had to do. So I, I widened it here and there and I'm actually not super happy with how it looks. It's pretty wide. Um, 
Luckily, someone else on the forums figured out how to get one of the door handles that matches this and should bolt right on. Um, it's for the Bronco. It's got the key cutouts, everything. It's good to go. So I went ahead and ordered that. Unfortunately, it was like $60 plus uh, 20 shipping, which is a huge pain. But I'm really not happy with this, how this came out. It's a little bit too wide around the edges. Um, but oh well. Uh, for now, I'll just put it back together and I'll deal with this later once that new part comes in. But I'm going to keep on marching on. So... Um, this door handle, I've, I've been monkeying with this for an hour. There's videos on how to take these off, but nobody shows you how to put it back on. And I've been just trying to jam this thing in here. It's just not working. So I'm going to show you the best I can. Oh, wait, that's the wrong tool. The, you need a little pick or something with a 90 degree or even like a hook. And then you go into this hole and you can see it right there. There's a little metal piece right here. I've already done it. But you got to go in there and pull this thing back. It's kind of spring loaded and then turn this. Um, I think you pull it, you, you have to go all the way in and then that will hold it in place. You either do it in or all the way out. And then eventually, like once you get that thing, yeah, no, it's got to be in. Cause all that, that, there's a little plastic tab over here and that's good. That goes forward and back. That's what this adjusts. And you got to pull this little spring loaded thing in and then push this all the way in. And then that will, that'll kind of, trying to do this with my, my hands, but it'll kind of lock it in right here. Now I can put the handle back in and then pull this and then loosen this back out um, to release it and then tighten it. And I think that should do it. So I'm gonna do that right now. But yeah, this took me a while to figure out. I thought I was doing something wrong or something was broken, but no, you gotta get this little metal piece, pull it in, lock it into place with this and then put the door handle in and then readjust accordingly. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, but yeah, this took me forever to figure out. Look, I found a small YouTube video that helped me out, but most of them just show you how to take it off. So that was a huge pain, but that's what I'm doing right, do right now. And then we can start on the wire. All right, after you got the door handle back on, we can move over and we're going to start replacing the harness. So I've already start, started pulling this one out just to kind of figure out what was going on. So you can kind of pull this top, um, if you can get this little top piece out with a flathead screwdriver or a pick, that's good. And then this middle piece, you need to pull this rubber boot up enough to push this tab in and then get this corner up. And once you get those two, the rest of it should come out. And then from there, you need to disconnect these two attachments. I already did the top one. Um, there was a little tab. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. There's a little tab. It was basically right here and you, you can use a little flathead screwdriver. And then there's another one on the very bottom. Same thing. This one I'm having a little trouble getting to. I'm not gonna do this on camera, but need to get your flat screw drill right at the very back there's a little tab punch it in that should come out i'm gonna keep working on this till i get that and then we can start replacing this harness. all right got that disconnected here's you can see the tab it was really hard to get my just to see it so i was more or less just poking at it with the flathead until i finally got it to pop off uh but all right so now we're just gonna go around and one by one just work the unplug these things work them out until we can get this whole harness out um, maybe take pictures of everywhere where it connects just so you can remember. I'm, I'm going to go through meticulously and do this. Uh, but yeah, if I get hung up on anything, I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, we got the door harness off. Um, a little bit of a pain, but really not too bad. It's just going slow and getting yourself unhooked off of things because there's so much sharp metal in here. Just everything wants to catch on everything. So not too bad. Got the harness over there on the ground. Uh, everything seems pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, we're going to get this hooked up. Um, a couple problems I ran into, um, way in the corner, there's one, it's a little bit tricky to get to. I mean, I had to reach a screwdriver in there to hit the tab to unhook it. And other than that, uh, not too bad. I did end up pulling everything through this hole right here. Um, it would be nice to do that, but the big plug over on this would be really difficult to fish back through there. At least I thought so. Yeah, I ended up going through there and that's where I'm gonna go back in through with everything. So yeah, I'm gonna start fishing it back in and get everything uh, reconnected so we can get this truck back together and fired up. Well, or turned on, I guess you wanna call it. <laughs> but all right, yeah, I'm gonna get back to work. All right, I just got these reattached. This was a total pain in the rear, but there's these two plugs, basically white on top, gray on bottom, and they're just kind of floating in here and you have only this much room to get in here and then there's maybe an inch once you get there so what i did first is i wrap i put zip ties through the wire just to give me something to, to clip onto and then i did the bottom one first and i used a pick with a hook on the end just to get on the end of it hold it in place while i buckled the bottom one 
And then the top one, I did more or less the same thing, but it slipped out, unfortunately, because it was a little bit twisted. So I had to get my fingers in there and kind of straighten it, pull it out a bit, and then get the hook on it, pull it out. Oh, it was a total pain. Um, small hands would be really helpful here, but it is what it is. But yeah, I got that. So I can start putting this back together, putting the door back together, and then uh, I think we're almost done here. It's just, uh, just four scans gonna be left. All right, so we're starting to reassemble. Don't forget your speaker. We got four bolts here, plug. And then one other thing I forgot to mention when we were doing the harness, there is a bolt down here. There's a little plastic retainer. Let me see if I can find it. It's this guy. This little plastic piece is behind the door and it's in a little, uh, there's a bracket around it and that bolt is holding it on. It's a 10 millimeter. So you're gonna wanna take that off so you can push the bracket out and pull that, uh, pull that cord through. All right, yeah, I'm gonna zip this thing back together and then we can uh, keep moving. All right, got the door back together. So time to turn on the power and see if everything works. All right, we got everything back together and put, put on or turned on. So everything seems to work. We got power, door locks, all the controls in the door seem to work. We got no codes or anything. So good so far. Um, this does look pretty terrible, but like I told you, I'm gonna swap that back, swap that cover out. I already ordered a new one. so. Should be here pretty soon. Um, like I said, I'll put the codes, um, sorry, not the codes, the uh, part numbers in the description so you guys can do that. Go either way if you want. If you want to do it yourself, you can try. Uh, hopefully you won't do as, quite as bad of a job as I did. <laughs> but once I get that new uh, door handle cover, I'll swap that on and nobody will know the difference. So it'll be ugly for a week or two, but oh well. So yeah, next step is a uh, four scan. So we're gonna get this thing coded and then we can get this thing turned on. Hey guys, it's about three weeks later. Um, <laughs> took a little break but uh, I ordered this new door handle and I just just threw this on right now because the one I did was so poorly done that I really wasn't happy with it so got this one swapped on um, I still have not done the four scan I'm actually gonna do that right now but everything on the truck worked fine except for, minus this of course so it was not a problem I just was busy with life went to Texas for a while a um, couple other things so just to get around to it but here we are almost a month later gonna get this done so I can get this YouTube video up to help anyone else who wants to do this. I know a lot of people have been asking for this one. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's get this four scan done, get this thing turned on and get this, uh, get this handle working. All right. All right. We got four scan hooked up, just firing it up on the computer. And the way this is going to work is, um, my understanding is that one of the modules needs to be updated in the, the, I think it's the 311 XLT and also the, uh, the pro. Uh, basically, the, the module is not putting out a signal for that little handle until you update it with the 312, the 312 um, XLT firmware. So what you need to do is, um, to make a long story short, you need to reach out to uh, for, uh, Forescan, or they have posted somewhere, which is what I did, um, um, their most updated version. Um, it's like a beta version um, of Forescan. You can see up in the corner. I've got 2.4.7, um, and these newer versions allow you to actually update the uh, the modules. So that's what we have to do. And also, to get the new firmware for the module, um, you need to reach out to uh, Force Forescan might have it in its like library that you can use, or um, you can go on the, X the F150 Lightning forums, reach out to the guys, someone will message you, or you can reach out to me. I don't think you can actually reach out to me through um, through YouTube. Um, I don't know if it posts my email or anything like that. So I'd say the easiest thing to do is just go on my Instagram. It's the same handle, Kurt's RPM Garage. Uh, you can follow me or not, and and then just uh, send me a DM, and then I can um, I can send you my email or whatever, and we can uh, exchange those details. But that's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, so if you reach out to me, I'll, I'll provide those for you, um, at least the ones I have. I'm gonna try them right now and see if they actually work. So yeah, I'm gonna get this uh, get this going. <laughs> I gotta get this thing connected, go down here in the bottom corner. Uh, I'm not gonna record all this because I'm not even sure if the, how this is gonna work, but I will um, go through afterwards with a summary of what we had to do. Um, should be, uh, I forget, I'm gonna put this down in a minute, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, give this a try, see if I can get everything working, and then I'll come back after with a summary. Uh, like I said, you can go on F with the Lightning forums, search for DIY passive entry for the whole file on this. I'm on there too. Um, you can see the walkthrough uh, that gives you exactly what you need to do. So you can go there, check that out, see if this is something you wanna do. But yeah, I'm gonna get to this, see if we can get this to work, and then I'll talk, uh, catch you guys in a minute. 
All right, guys, so here I am kind of in the middle of everything, but just wanted to give you another quick rundown. So after you uh, get the latest update to Forescan, it'll give you the option for body control module firmware update under the, the module section. So you go to that, click on the one that says module up, body control module update or firmware, firmware update. It'll take you to this screen. Most of these will be empty. I've already filled these in. But what's, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, take those values that I uh, either I gave you, Forescan, whoever, uh, for the 312 XLT um, versions body control module. And then you'll have, need to extract those values somewhere uh, in a file that you can get to with your, uh, with your, with your uh, laptop that you're using. And then you're going to click on this little three dot section to go in, to find the file. And basically just navigate to wherever you saved it. And then it will only let you use the ones that work for each spot. So there were like 10 values or whatever that you can see here. When, I, when and you go to each one, the only one that will be available is the one that will work. Well, in theory, at least that's how it was for me. So once you click on that, it'll it'll uh, fill this in. And then you got to go one by one and do all the same thing for all these. Um, double check them on the M50 Lightning Forum. The guy who did this, let me just get his name again. It was ZSC100. Uh, he's the guy who did all the, who put all this stuff together. So he provided how the values are supposed to look. So you can go back and double check them. And you can't just input these manually. I tried. It won't let you. You have to load them from somewhere. Even if you have the right numbers and whatever, it doesn't mean anything to it. So you need to make sure those match. And then, haven't done this yet, but I assume I press probably program, I would imagine. Um, and then, yeah, that should be it. It should do it automatically after that. Uh, from there, we're going to have to input a few more Forescan values just to turn everything on. And then we should be about done. So, yeah, that's what we got. All right, little update. So I pressed program, and it went through. It took three or four minutes. It just uh, kind of got hung up in a few places for us for 30 seconds or so. Then it would continue, do 20%, 30% at a time, same thing. And you can see this is what it looks like, and it looks like everything worked. So we are good to go so far. So we have updated the module, so that should be working now. And all we got to do now is update some of our uh, X, X, uh, uh, sorry about that, four scan values so that we can turn this on. Apparently we will get approach lighting as well. So the truck should turn on the side lights and stuff as we walk up next to it. Pretty nice little feature. So yeah, we're gonna go through this uh, Excel file uh, provided by the ZSC100, I think his name was. And we'll see if we can get this thing done. There's, a, there's not too many values here. We're just gonna go through one by one. Uh, make sure these are all enabled and then yeah, we should be good to go. All right, let's see So once again, I'm not gonna go through all these there's a there's a ton here and this is gonna take forever if I do it one by one But I will show you how to do it. So here's this uh, Excel file provided by ZSC 100 So what we got um, Let's see Over here. This is telling me this is in the body control module BCM and then this is the address right here so what you do is you go to you go to your modules go to body control modules as built and then here's your address right here so you can follow this down so our first one we have 726-18-01 so 18-01 right here next you can look at this uh blah 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 but we're looking for that star so the second number is a star and then what this means is if there's a zero there, that means it's disabled. And if there's a one, it's enabled. So 726, uh, it's zero, zero, zero. So it, right now it's disabled. So I'm gonna change that, that second zero to a one and turn that on. That's all you do. Same, it's more or less the same thing for all these. Just go through, find the right one and basically change zero to one for virtually all of them, it looks like. There might be a couple different, yeah, here we go. There's some, some different ones down here, but that's literally all you do to this. Um, so you'll change that and then you'll press right um, after you do it. And that's it. You go through everything. Once you're done, you can press stop. And uh, yeah, all those values will be changed and hopefully this thing should be turned on. So I'm going to spend probably 20 minutes right now going through these and turning them on. But yeah, hopefully that helps you. Um, I'll check back in once uh, hopefully everything's working. See ya. All right, got everything punched in one by one. Um, if you'll probably notice this pretty much right away, but a lot of these are the same more or less address, 726, 1801. See, these are all the same one. They're just different spots in the blockchain or whatever you want to call it. 
to go through. Um, I have a, some of these actually turned on already when I think when I did the bed lights and a few other things, a lot of these towards the bottom. Um, so that's totally fine. Um, so yeah, once you're done, just hit the stop button uh, after you write everything, cycle the ignition. And I believe mine's turned on. Um, I just haven't tested it yet, but I'm gonna step out of the car right now and just see if this thing works. All right, guys, I did a little test run. It seems like it's working pretty good. So no hands on the key or anything, lock it up. You can hear it unlock and we're in. That's awesome. It does seem to unlock too, but not as consistently, or I'm sorry, lock. Yeah, it's still trying to unlock. I can see the, the mirrors flashing, but we got the keypad if we need that, so. Easy peasy. Yeah, so hopefully this helps you guys. If you got any questions, let me know. Like I said, if you need to get those values, um, if they're not in the Forescan library by now with the updated version, uh, you can reach out to me. There's probably my Instagram's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Just send me a DM. It's the same net, same name that I have here. Um, so yeah, that's that. I know a lot of guys were asking me about this, uh, waiting on me to to get this. <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. It just man, this heat is just horrible this is like the nicest day we've had in a while it's nice and overcast it's probably under 80 first time in a while uh, when it's 95 plus you just don't want to do anything outside so and unfortunately the garage is taken up by the other two vehicles so it is what it is but um yeah hopefully you guys enjoy um if you got any questions obviously let me know in the comments so just a little wrap up before i go um as far as like difficulty on this one goes this one was a little bit tricky uh there's just a lot of a uh, little fine thing she had to do like popping off the handles getting the handles uh on and off uh i think i mentioned earlier this was a couple weeks ago so i'm just going by memory but i think i mentioned that uh if you're trying to put the handle on and you put it on then maybe pull it out prematurely there's like a clamp thing that will close and if that closes you can't get the handle back in you have to basically get a screwdriver and then reset the handle by sticking in the screwdriver and pulling the the vise out and then you can put it back in and then tighten the side where it grips onto it. That took me like an hour and a half to figure out. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Really confused by that. So hopefully that little word of advice helps some guys. Let's see. Otherwise, um, there was a couple parts where you had to kind of, there's just not very good access to some of the wiring and you could easily push into the body if you're not paying attention. So it would really help to have three hands. Obviously, that's not an option for most people. Uh, so zip ties are going to be your friends. Uh, lots of these pick tools, whether 90 degrees, hooks on the end, those are really helpful for that kind of stuff. Um, the fork scan stuff isn't that difficult, but it is a little bit tricky. Uh, like I said, you got to download the latest version of Forescan or a, a, a new one of the newer versions uh, that they don't just give you. You have to go find it more or less or reach out to Forescan and ask for it. That way you can update the module um, from the Pro or the XLT 3, 311A to the 312A, and that'll allow the module to turn on that basically the signal that works in that hand on. Once you do that, then it's just basically, uh, you just input those values, like I said, which I'll, I'll give you, or, uh, or Forescan or whoever, and then you can just go through and turn them on one by one. So yeah, not that difficult a thing, um, but this will be pretty nice. Uh, if I would have known I could have done this, I probably would have skipped out on the keypad. Uh, I did this, 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 the guy who figured this out did it after the, um, after I'd already put the keypad on. So, oh, well, that's fine. I, it doesn't hurt to have both. It's nice to have the keypad if you go somewhere and don't bring your keys so you can go camping or whatever, or just run out to the car without the key in your pocket. So whatever, that's fine. The keypad really wasn't that difficult to install anyways. So, but yeah, otherwise the hardest part for me at least was the dremeling, which I totally screwed up, but <laughs> I thought I measured it right. And it looked like I, I was a little bit offset. So after that, I had to just keep widening and widening it until like, until I got it fixed. And by then it was so wide, uh, it was just ugly. I just really wasn't happy with it. So I was happy enough to spend the extra $80 or whatever for the new handle. Unfortunately, you can't buy the handle, the correct handle, uh, with the, the right wiring and everything in the, in the correct black, uh, handle. Basically you have to buy two handles, the one with the gray handle with the correct wiring and the one that is basically off of a Bronco. Uh, I'll put those two, two, um, the links to those in the description but yeah that's a real total bummer hopefully someone can find the the correct part number so that you can just bypass that completely and get the correct one right off the bat but as of right now that's uh nobody's figured that out yet so yeah total bummer but oh well i'm happy with it now it looks good and uh yeah otherwise i think that's it that's all i got on my end so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed and i'll see you on the next one